Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2020-2021 Upper Deck Opeechee Platinum Hockey 8 box. Pick your team number 8. I think this is the last inner case of Opeechee Platinum that we have at the shop. Unless we've ordered some more, but I haven't seen any more. So um, big thanks to everybody who got into the action. Now if you bought at least two teams, you get an entry, four teams, 200, so on and so forth. For, uh, for a free box of, of uh, Peachy Platinum. All right, so with that being said, good luck, everybody. Thanks for uh, getting into this straight up. And thanks to Sean B. with the Caps, Last Spot Mojo, getting this show on the road. Remember, in the previous break, I marked this case so we know it's from the same master case. What is happening in the hockey world, ladies and gentlemen? Someone, someone keep me posted. What's going on? Capital signed forward Dowd to a three-year extension. Everyone knows him. I don't know him, but Canucks' Pullman gets a two-game high sticking ban. Come on, Pullman. Senators adding three more to the COVID list. Uh, Fakal first Caps goalie to post shutout in debut. All right. Bruins, Oilers celebrate late player cave. Uh, what else? Sidney Crosby returning from the COVID list and lost the caps. So on and so forth. My, the interesting bit of news that we saw that I mentioned earlier, and I and mentioned this during the break in the last video too, but according to uh, a source telling ESPN writer Greg Wyshynski, NHL Eyes Skills event on Vegas Strip. League executives were in Las Vegas this week to present the the plan to the city to city officials, local police, and at least one hotel, the Bellagio. The 2022 NHL All Star Game Skills Competition is scheduled for Friday. So I don't know an outdoor event. Where are they going to? What are they going to do? The plans to have traditional skills. Events such as Hardest Shot and Fastest Skater inside the arena. The outdoor events will be created specifically for the Vegas All-Star Weekend which with themes inspired by Sin City itself. The NHL is deciding between a few different concerts for the events, but they will all have a Vegas touch to them, said one source. The outdoor event will require a temporary shutdown of Las Vegas Boulevard, the main thoroughfare known as the Strip, yes. It's expected to be a partial closure of the six-lane road rather than a total shutdown. Blah, 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 blah. What does that mean? What do you think? What, what, what are your ideas? What would you like to see? I would like to see them freeze the fountains. Oh, they can't do this, but they, they, to freeze the fountain at the Bellagio and then have, have the guy skate around there. There's Steven Lorenz, Marquee Rookies, Rainbow. Alexander Barkov. Blue rainbow to 149. And we got our first Alexi Lafreniere marquee rookies, no parallel. That'll be for Walter and the Rangers. Let's find some parallels, maybe some ink for this guy. And then we need him to play well this season. Barkov, blue rainbow goes to Florida. That's going to go to... David Bacanis. There's two different David B's in this break. Leon Dreisettal, Sunset Parallel, which I think looks really sharp. There he is again, Rainbow. And our autograph is Calder frontrunner Barrett Hayton. That'll be for David Bacanis and the Arizona Coyotes. Oh, oh, oh. I kind of might kind of wearing coyotes colors, right? Marquee rookies. 
Sunset Parallel, Victor Soderstrom for Arizona. And so, bed commons don't ship, but that's a parallel, obviously, so that will ship. And obviously, all the marquee rookies will ship. I'm just trying to spot some nicer parallels for these marquee rookies. Let's leave all those up a little bit later. There's Ryan Nugent Hopkins, yellow tracks, 190 out of 249. Mitch Marner in the back there. No, no one, no one has, no one has, uh, no one wants to see certain things. You know what I'd like to see with the outdoor events would be specifically created for all with themes inspired by Sin City itself. So my guess is that this is going to be a fan sort of event, right? Maybe even if it's not a fan event, I'm sure they'll still have some fan fest stuff there too. If it's maybe, it'll have to be something like slot machine related, right? A hockey puck inside one of those Pachenko machines. I, that could be interesting. I don't know how the players would do that. Maybe there would be, you know what I'd like, uh, you know what would be cool? Um, would be like a big, uh, I mean this would be huge, right? This would be like Kino numbers or something like that. And so various players will have to go and try to hit some numbers. And then fans would have like a Kino card or something like that. And then if they win, they could win money or something. I don't know. I'm not good at this right now. <laughs> Maybe the NHL is like, Joe, you are of no help. I'll have to think about this some more. Because it has to be, if, if they're saying it's a skills competition, so you're, you're getting players involved to do something Vegas related. You know, or maybe you have like a huge board with like blackjack cards and you would have like someone try to shoot out cards and try to get 21 or something like that. And then everyone wins something. There's yellow track, 234 at 249. Peyton Krebs for Vegas. Speaking of Vegas, that'll be for David Bacanis. Sorry about that. Rasmus Dahlin, Sunset. The Connor McDavid here. And our autograph is Steven Lorenz. We saw his marquee rookies a little bit earlier. Here's his rookie autograph for David Batterino and the Carolina Hurricanes. Rock you like a hurricane. And Connor McDavid, of course, will go to Sean Maddock and Edmonton. Thomas Hurdle, red prism to 199. That'll be for San Jose. That's going to go to David Batterino. Got Nick Robertson, marquee rookies, rainbow for Toronto. Also for the same David B. Connor McDavid, Matt Pink. And a marquee rookie sunset, Jake Odinger. And a Jordan Bennington, Aqua Marine to 499 for St. Louis. Michael Gallucci has the St. Louis Blues. Jake going to Dallas. That's for David Rodriguez. And the Conor McDavid, Matt Pink. Once again, Sean M. from the Oilers.
All right, next box. Oh, that's right. The Winter Olympics. The NHL All-Star Weekend will be the last will be the league's last event before its scheduled break for the Beijing Olympics through Tuesday, February 22nd. It's almost a few weeks. It's, uh, it's expected that Olympic national team players who participate in the All-Star Weekend will leave directly for China after its completion. So, forgot about that. Winter Olympics. It's everyone's favorite uh, Winter Olympic sport, besides hockey. Yeah, February 4th to February 20th. I suppose the, the, the bobsleigh is all, always a fun one to watch. Not sure if anyone gets too much thrill out of cross-country skiing. Curling could be pretty interesting. I guess any sort of the any sort of snowboarding event is always fun. The ski jump ski jumping events, I I really get a kick out of those. Just ridiculous. A little speed skating for Husky. Yeah, speed skating is pretty fun. We got Dylan Cousins, 126 out of 199. Marquee rookie red prism. Buffalo! David Batterino. That one. That's one of the players he was looking for. Philip Kurashev, marquee rookies, rainbow. I don't, I don't mind watching a little Olympic figure skating. There's Anthony Angelo rookie autograph for Pittsburgh. I feel like there's always like some some good American figure skaters that are out there, right? On the men and women's side. Anthony Angelo. Rookie autograph for Pittsburgh, David Batterino. That's a marquee rookie, Timothy Liljegren, Matt Pink. What's the, is, is that the biathlon? Is the biathlon one where they cross country ski and then they shoot something like targets? I think that's what it is. Yeah, the the little logo is uh, <laughs> the little uh, caricature logo is someone skiing with a rifle slung over them. To four ninety nine, Aquamarine. Philip Broberg, Rainbow. Um, I obviously grew up in Southern California, so I did not grow up, I mean, even though, even though we're near snow, we have easy access to snow, I've never done any snow sports. No snowboarding, no skiing, you know, at best sledding down a hill. I can, I can skate. But that's, that's more as a result of like rollerblading, you know, so... But I always thought like the biathlon was uh, was something that was really that looked really peaceful. 
You know, like, hey, I'm just doing some cross country skiing on my own. You know, pop a couple targets, test your aim and skiing. I think the I think the difficult thing is uh, the challenge is your heart rate is up. And um, and so to be able to 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 engage in that cross country skiing, I think this is how you cross country ski when you do when you engage in that, and then you have to kind of kind of relax yourself in time to take a steady shot. I mean, it's, I don't know something about it looked kind of peaceful. Steve, what's going on? So I'll watch a little bit of that. I'll watch a little biathlon. Why isn't uh I'm trying to read like demonstration events? There was a sled dog race in Lake Placid in nineteen thirty two. Like to see some of that. What about the uh, do they still do the Iditarod? There's Barrett Hayden, rookie autos. For the Arizona Coyotes, David McConnus. That's I'd like to go see the Iditarod. There's William Carlson to one forty nine. Random sporting events to, <laughs> that I want to go to. The Iditarod. I guess they did one in 2021 already. Dallas, Dallas CV. Wait till they start printing Iditarod cards. Dallas CV's won five Iditarods. That's crazy. Marquee rookie sunset parallel, and we got a, a uh, Brian Rust seven out of twenty five orange checkers. That's what I hear, Sean Breen. It, it is pretty hard. It's pretty hard on the dogs. That's for sure. I guess they usually, it usually happens in March.
To show what? To you, it's the same as yeah. I, I think there are there are some big I, at least in at least in modern times. There's some question marks about about whether this race should even happen or not. I think back in the day, the Iditarod was mainly to, from what I remember is, I mean, these dogs are already working dogs already, you know, that around, and I don't know, maybe still people still use dogs as, as, as working animals. I feel like that's not as common anymore. I don't know how common how common is that. I've never been to Alaska. I want to go to Alaska. Dude. Maybe people still use still use uh, dog sleds as a mode of transportation or for work on on their land. There's Anthony Mantha to 50, Seismic Gold. That's for Steve Wright in Detroit. Marquee Rookies. Rainbow, Yegor Sharanagovich for New Jersey, David. And the rookie auto is for Boston. That's Zach Senishin. Give you a little number inscription there too, David Batterino and the Boston Bruins. I was in a. I was in Spain many years ago. To uh, to to run with the Bulls. And. Yeah, it was kind of it was kind of weird to be at like at. At like a bar and there's just bullfighting on TV. There's violet pixels to three ninety nine. I don't know if it's as big of a thing anymore. John Breen, you've, you've actually spent some time in Alaska? Quite a bit of time in Alaska. It's definitely a must-see, winter and summer. Yeah, I definitely want to go. Having a midnight tea time in June has got to be fun. Northern lights in the winter, yeah. That's definitely a spot I want to get to. I've read that I've read old stories of of like independent league baseball that happened in Alaska where like it would because of the because of how much you know how much daylight is there in certain parts of the year where people were able to you could get away with playing uh, playing triple headers. Like, there'd be old stories of, of, like, yeah, an independent baseball back in the day. You know, kids would just go and play triple headers. You'd play one in the morning, 
you know, one in the afternoon, you take a nap and you can play one, and you can all play those by daylight. <laughs> I think this was this was before like you know like lights were common in those kind of fields. All right, there's Rasmus Dahlin for Buffalo, yellow tracks. I I did get close to the bull somewhat. I mean, it's not so this this they're they're like ancient old European streets in Pamplona. So all the streets are pretty narrow and you know, they make like these narrow turns, but the bulls generally run down the center of the, of the, of these narrow streets, you know, and it's not like I was running here in the middle. I was definitely off to the side, um, definitely jogging down the, uh, down the sides and everything. And, and yeah, but they they, they kind of like rumble by you and they're like, oh, there they go. <laughs> and it's kind of gone in a flash, but you can kind of hear them approaching, obviously. So it is, it is, gets, it gets your heart rate up a little bit. But no, I was, I was not silly enough to be, to step in front of a bull or, or whatnot. I was I was not into that. It was Blue Rainbow to one forty nine. I I don't know where. There's a couple of different. I don't know if the tomato fight is in the same place. I don't think that's Pamplona, but I want to say it's kind of. Is it the same area? That looks fun too. There's Pierre Luc Dubois to four ninety nine Aquamarine. And there's a Ilya Sorokin, marquee rookie rainbow. One of the players that David Batterino is definitely looking for. Nice. That's a, that's a good event too, Sean Breen. I think that's in the UK some. Is it in the UK somewhere? I think it's in England somewhere. Or they they roll a huge wheel of cheese down the hill, and everyone chases. And apparently, like that wheel of cheese is like. It's like tens of thousands of dollars, though. It's like super expensive, and and if you can if you can actually get the wheel of cheese, like put your hands on it first, you either you get to keep that wheel of cheese or something like that, or win the prize equivalent of said roll of cheese. I think most people keep it. I think it's a really cool. If you're if you're a cheese person, apparently it's really nice. I like cheese, but I, I couldn't tell you. You know, I, I'm I don't know fancy cheeses. You know. Um, but apparently it's a thing, but apparently like it's very dangerous because it's steep enough where, and it's like rocky and, and steep enough where, uh, people have like, you just fall on your neck weird and snap. It's done times. But, um, crucially, I think that it is not an event officially sponsored by the makers of that cheese, which is how they've avoided like litigation. I want to say that it's part of like, it's like a community event that's just turned into like this club that kind of organizes this event or something like that. But not officially. I think people just kind of show up and then there's like a wheel of cheese that rolls down the hill. So no one gets sued if they break an arm or something like that. There's no, the city doesn't organize this festival. It's just people just kind of show up on this day and then there go, there goes a wheel of cheese.
There's another Alexi Lafreniere. Yeah, that that would be something I would I would I would like to see. And there's Gage Quinney for Vegas. That's going to be for David Bacanis and the Vegas Golden Knights. I don't know of the auto race on the Isle of Wight. But I like auto racing. That must be a pretty narrow, yeah. Is it all, is it all motorcycle? Oh, oh, they're gonna welcome motorcycle road racing for the first time. Yeah, that sounds. I, I would like to watch that. Yellow tracks two forty nine. That's Zach Paris for the Minnesota Wild. Will be for Walter. I'd like to see a Le Mans, too, to go see. I don't know what you, I mean, can you, if you buy tickets for Le Mans, do you, do you have those seats at any time? You can take a nap and you can wake up at three in the morning and go see people, people driving around. The 43 out of 50 seismic gold, Mitch Marner, Toronto, Batterino. Hey, do you need anything from the shipping room? Um, no, I don't think so. There's Braden Shen, 191 out of 399, Violet Pixels. That's for St. Louis, that's going to go to Michael Gallucci. And the final box. events that I want to see. Uh, I don't know how interesting this would be as a spectator sport, unless I'm on a boat, but like an America's Cup would be like something, a random sailing event that I'd like to see. Oh. That's not good. Oh, boo. Came out of the pack in that weird way. Must be a manufacturing thing here. They may be able to replace this auto for you, Washington. That goes to Sean Breen. Kind of comes out of that pack weird. We're going to send you that... Uh, that UPC code there. Yeah, Gage Quinney was, was the auto in the last box.
Well, the autograph's already out, but let's see if we can get some other parallels here. There's a Merz Lincoln's 004 to 199. Columbus, that's going to go to David. There's a base Connor McDavid here. There's a Sunset Sorokin. For the Islanders. There's Gustav to 499. That'll be for Detroit, Steve Wright. Ian Mitchell Rainbow, Carey Price Red Prism to 199. Connor Hellebuck to 99, Arctic Freeze, and another autograph. That's two autographs in there, Cody Glass. For Vegas. It's for David. All right, so let's clear all these other cards away here. Yo, I'm going to go. Is, is that cool? Yeah, that sounds good, man. Cool. All right, peace. I'll peace. see you. Take it easy. You too, man. Good luck with the rest of the night. Thanks. All right, oh, let me just leave that over there. Um, let's give away the box. Let's flip over to the list, and then we'll do a quick little recap. So let's gather everybody's names alphabetically. If you bought at least two teams, you get an entry for a sealed box of OPG Platinum. So Ben, two teams, one entry. Let's actually make this a little bit bigger here. David Bacanas with six, so that's three entries. David Batterino with 10 teams, that's five entries, basically by an even number of teams. David Rowling got one team. Eric J with two teams, that's an entry. Michael, two teams, that's an entry. Sean with two teams, that's an entry. Sean M. Steve Wright with two teams, that's an entry. Walter with two teams, that's an entry. I think William only got one. All right. Let's just spot check this really quick. So both David B's, Ben Smith, and down to Eric J. Michael J. Sean M. Steve Wright. All right, good luck. There's new dice, new list, name on top after three. We'll get the box. One, two, and three. Congrats to Michael Gallucci. There you go, Michael. Um, sealed box going your way. If you choose to open it and you get something cool, like a one of one or something like that, Conor McDavid autograph, definitely let us know. All right, here's the recap. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, and then there is the eighth box. Huh, I don't know what I did there. I stacked two different boxes on each other. Anyway, one autograph per box. We got everything. Um, Sean B., I will, I'll send you that extra stuff right there. Maybe we can get a replacement card from Upper Deck. I think you can contact their customer service. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.